hopefully this is the last time we'll see this transmission. Uh, this is the Chevy 490 transmission that came with my 1919 Model T chassis. I've had a hard time selling this, and I have another one actually. I've had a hard time selling both, but I think I found a buyer. For my own curiosity's sake, I'm gonna pop the top. Maybe I don't wanna know what it looks like inside. Moment of truth. Some moisture in there. There's actually some water in there. That's no good. So that actually looks pretty great inside, except for some moisture. Glad I did pop the top. So where else are you gonna find two 100 year old Chevrolet transmissions? The one on the right is the one I just pulled off of my 1919 Model T. The one on the left I actually acquired recently. It was sitting in a barn and had a big flat belt pulley on it. And that inspired me to buy it to maybe use as an auxiliary gearbox for one of my lathes. It has had the gear shift lever modified. Looks like it was bent kind of straight and cut down. So overall, my Model T Chevrolet transmission is in much better shape than my other barn find one, although this one's still good. I'd like to get the Model T U-joint off of that transmission before I sell it, but for now, that thing is stuck on there good. Also notice that this transmission has the coupler to, I guess, a Chevrolet torque tube. If they use torque tubes, I'm not sure. I just sold those two 490 transmissions, and then from the same guy, I bought these Model T parts, so... I basically just traded those two transmissions for this lot. Um, got a couple spindles, steering arms, steering bracket. Model T's don't have a steering box. A couple of the spring clamp holder deals. A couple perches. One of the rear spring U-bolts, one of the front spring U-bolts. Pedal, clevis, and I'm assuming this is some sort of fender mount, although I don't know for what style. So this is one of the spindles I just bought. And yeah, that looks like a pretty decent match. I don't know if they're left side or right side or if it matters. He had a couple more that were really big. I'm assuming they were for TT. I guess I could check. This is the axle on my TT chassis and the spindles aren't any different. So I don't know what his really thick ones were for, but I didn't get them. Even the junkyard axle that I got has these more spindly spindles. I noticed this steering bracket has the prefix of TT. I had been wondering if the T and the TT used the same steering components. I guess I need to know which one I actually need using a TT cab on a T chassis. Maybe I can just use the T bracket that I have. But if I need the TT one, looks like I have it. Comparing the TT bracket to my presumably T bracket, came off my 1919 chassis. Yeah, there's uh, definitely some casting differences. Looks like it's about parallel. I haven't looked super hard, but I'm not seeing any part number on my original bracket. So I just noticed this on my 1919 chassis. I'd always seen these brackets from the top, but now that I flipped over the axle, I can see just exactly what they are. It's the creator's way of changing the brake angle of the axle to match the raised engine. So it looks like the wishbone is still intact, bolted to this bracket, which is then bolted to the axle. Uh, you think that's very flexible? I've been wanting to get the steering column off for a while. It's got the similar spring and a cup, like a Model A steering. I wonder if it steers. Yep. Nice. That's what I see here. This is the bad part of the wheel. Um, that's a shame. Oh, I didn't even notice that one of these clamps is still on. It's a shame about that wheel. That's cool. In case this bar is the one I need as a stabilizer, a 
between my running boards. I'm going to take it off of this contraption. In my last video, I was able to pull the engine and strip the frame on my 1919. I want to look into the rear ends now. This is the modified rear end from my 1919 with the cut down drive shaft and torque tube and wishbones with the homemade wooden wheels that the guy supposedly went 55 miles an hour on. I want to get this stuff torn down so I can put it on the workbench in my shop because although it looks warm out here, it's like 20 degrees right now. What I've learned in this project is I need larger double square sockets because this is getting old. I don't know if I need to split this in order to pull the drive shaft. Apparently not. All right. Little bit of surface rust on them gears. I didn't get a chance to show it on film, but I removed the Model T U joint off of that Chevrolet 490 transmission. Um, took a lot of heat and some gentle tapping, but I got it off of there. It's not bad. It's definitely better than this one. I found this while doing some barn picking recently. Lucen, Navy brand from St. Louis, Missouri. Wonder if they're still around. Oops. So I've got the wood portion of the wheel to come off about three quarters to an inch. It's getting hung up on those bolts, on the threads of those bolts. I can't back those out because of the bell on the axle housing. I mean, if I could just pull that hub, then the whole thing would come off and be no big deal. Look at all those nails that hold that wheel together. My whole palm itches because I hit my thumb so hard. This thing is uh, 
not wanting to let go. Alrighty. I couldn't be defeated by that one wheel. That one's been split by frozen water. I think this rear end's broken down enough to at least take it inside. more evidence of the uh, adjusted angle on the axles since they lifted that engine up in the chassis they had to adjust everything to accommodate and added these extra holes in this uh, would you feel comfortable driving around with that little bit of margin right there there was some questionable stuff done on this one 55 miles an hour they say well here lies the remains of my 1919 chassis at least the superfluous stuff the broken wood the brackets the chassis itself is almost completely broken down, but it's at least factory Ford stuff now instead of this extra nonsense. I'm going to tear down that other rear end so I can kind of build up one out of the two. Hopefully they're from the same era. I just had this rear end sitting on a tumble bug Fresno scraper farm implement, whatever you want to call it. So this rear end at least has the uh, cam for the brakes. I'm thinking this drum is different than on my 19 axle. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe the later ones had a bigger like 11 inch drum and the earlier ones had like an eight inch. This nut is all stripped off. Those holes look a little better than my 19. This nut is all stripped out too.
should be able to use this torque tube. It's a little pitted. And I do have the wishbones for it. And I do have another drive shaft because this one is unknown. When I picked this rear end up from my friend, a bunch of water poured out, so I didn't have high hopes for it. Hoping I can save these grease cups. Not that they're expensive, but it's cooler to have the old original stuff than the repops. It should be getting easier, not harder. Not much grease left in that one. It's all the way in. Looks like they used a torch and cut off two of the four bolt holes. It's kind of annoying. Drive shaft isn't seized, but the U joint appears to be. The torque tube is a little pitted. I think it'll clean up decently though. And here's the pitting on the axle housings. Flaky, not great couple grinder marks right there. I mean I could weld that back up but this pitting is kind of rough. I could straighten that if I wanted. More pitting here. It's just a little more than I would like. And here's the pitting on the other axle housing. A bit more than I would like and another grinder mark don't know what they were doing here comparing the backing plates from the two rear ends yeah this mystery one is quite a bit bigger than my 1919 the centers look pretty similar so there's a hex fill on my 19 and a square on this mystery one big backing plates different kind of style of the axle housing itself as well. I guess I got those rear ends apart just in time. I need to take the good parts off this chassis. It's been sending out the elements for decades and decades sitting in a creek. There's a couple good pieces left on it. Some of the wood from my 19 chassis is getting one last use. Got the drive shaft sitting on top of my wood stove. Hoping to free up this U-joint. Uh, 